you've got to, you just got to have a good attitude about it. Marshall Fire victims are ready to take the next step toward rebuilding. Uh, I think there's definitely going to be a sigh of relief when uh, the debris removal will actually begins. But homeowners are skeptical about the cost. Who's doing what and who's reimbursing who and, you know, it just it's just a really overwhelming process. Close to 60 degrees with sunshine today. Tomorrow it's cold and snow. Looking for a home? Good luck. Inventory is at an all-time low in Colorado. The offers just getting beat out left and right. We're seeing over asking up to $160,000 to $100,000. Good evening and thank you for joining us at 6. I'm Andrew Heal. I'm Shannon Ogden. Boulder County debris removal from the buildings lost in the Marshall Fire will begin March 1st. Of course, fire victims are skeptical. They say they've been kept in the dark about much of the process. And today, Boulder County selected DRC, a company based in Texas, to handle debris removal after a bidding process. About 800 homeowners have opted into the program. Boulder County will pay for the removal and is eligible for a FEMA reimbursement of up to 75%. Now, it is still unclear exactly how much the cleanup will cost. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn spent the day in Louisville talking with homeowners about what's next. And while there is a collective sigh of relief tonight, still a long road to recovery. It, it gets better day by day. For Leslie Draper, the past six weeks has certainly had its ups and downs. I did get a chance to have a church group help me do some sifting yesterday, so I feel I'm getting a little more closure. Christian Dino lost his home too. We've taken over the basement in my mother-in-law's house in Niwa. Both of these Marshall Fire victims are ready for the debris removal process to begin. I think probably most people might be ready for that. I think there's definitely going to be a sigh of relief when uh, the debris removal actually begins. Boulder County is promising debris removal will start on March 1st. The county awarding the contract to DRC after a weeks long bidding process that at times seemed to drag on and on for victims. People are very confused about what's going on and what's next and who's doing what and who's reimbursing who and you know it just it's just a really overwhelming process. Dino agrees. He says awarding the contract is a step in the right direction, but he's still very concerned about the city of Louisville's green rebuilding policy. You know, I I reached out to several solar companies and uh, received some solar bids for what it would take for a net zero uh, solar panel installation on site and received numbers coming in at around 45, 50,000 just for that one piece. For Draper, it's about rebuilding costs as well and under insurance. Not even sure yet. I'm no. not even I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to afford to do it, but um, you know, I was just laughing, thinking maybe I'll just put a tiny house on there. <laughs> <laughs> Two homeowners who lost it all worried about what's next while trying to remain upbeat. It's like you've got to you just got to have a good attitude about it in Louisville. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. Take this in depth. There are multiple wildfire bills moving through the state legislature right now. One of them aims to make it easier for victims to file and receive initial claims on lost property. Another would offer incentives to local governments that establish a dedicated revenue source for forest management or wildfire mitigation efforts. Both bills are still being considered in House committees. And putting this in perspective, because there really is no hard and fast rule on how long a rebuild should take. In 2012, the Waldo Canyon fire destroyed nearly 350 homes in the Mountain Shadows neighborhood of El Paso County. The Colorado Springs Gazette notes that 250 of them were rebuilt within two years. A year after Waldo Canyon came the Black Forest fire and rebuilding was quick for some. Others struggled mightily to clear trees and debris from their properties. And more recently, we look to the campfire in Paradise, California. As destructive as any fire we've seen, it destroyed nearly 19,000 homes, businesses and buildings. That was in 2018. And then three years later, only 1,000 homes have been rebuilt. And regardless of how long rebuilding takes, Boulder County is going to need all the help it can get. FEMA is making disaster management specialists available through the middle of next week at the Home Depot in Longmont. And we have more information on the DenverChannel.com as well as additional resources. And you'll find it all on our free Denver 7 Plus app.
We made it to the 60s today in Denver. So naturally we have snow tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson on this weather action day to tell us just how much snow we're looking at, Mike. It's not gonna be a record-breaking storm by any means, but certainly a big change. This is the sunset just in the past hour, spectacular along the Front Range, but those colorful high clouds are signs of the change that's coming in in our weather. No precipitation in the state at the moment, but the front is to the north of us. You can see the cold front in central Wyoming, the rain and the snow coming in behind it. It's dropping southward at about 30 miles per hour, so to arrive here early tomorrow morning. Temperatures are going to be dropping tomorrow. We'll have readings only in the low 30s by this time tomorrow afternoon. The snow develops midday to early afternoon, be ending early Saturday morning. As far as the amounts, uh, could see close to half a foot in some of the mountains and foothill locations. And we'll see a few inches here in the metro. I'll time it all out for you hour by hour, but good news, warmer weather does return as early as Sunday. Aurora has selected a Florida-based consultancy group to oversee changes within its police and fire departments. The reforms are the result of multiple investigations into the death of Elijah McClain. The most effective way to improve public safety is to prevent a crime from occurring in the first place. Governor Polis released a new safety plan aimed at lowering crime in our state. The $113 million package will put funds toward things like mental health services and retaining law enforcement officers. Now, some law enforcement leaders supported the governor's plans, including the sheriffs in Boulder, Summit and Douglas counties. Major police unions like the Colorado Fraternal Order Police say they're against the governor's new plan. In a joint letter, the union said the plan fails to advance policy changes and prioritizes offenders over victims. Well, Colorado Secretary of State is putting new rules in place to make sure our elections remain secure. They include things like updating password requirements and how counties can go about backing up election information. Secretary of State Griswold also limiting the number of people who have administered uh, administrative access to each county's election system from 10 people to now just four. And this comes after investigations into three Colorado counties and Mesa County Clerk Tina Peters currently under investigation for compromising sensitive election information. And today Peters turned herself into the sheriff's office on two unrelated charges. Peters was originally detained earlier this week for allegedly recording a court hearing without permission. Police say she then tried to kick an officer while she was being handcuffed. And those things together led to charges of obstructing government operations and obstructing a peace officer. Peters was released from custody today after posting $500 bond. Also, Secretary Griswold has closed an investigation into Douglas County's clerk and recorder without taking further action. Merlin Klotz claimed in a social media post that he took a picture of the election server ahead of required maintenance. Now, Klotz has since said that he used the wrong terminology in describing what happened there. And in her security rules issued today, Secretary Griswold is also prohibiting images of voting system hard drives without prior approval of the Department of State. Douglas County's former special education services director says he feels the district left him when the Board of Education voted to fire the superintendent. In a resignation letter obtained by Denver 7, Sid Rundle says the board is clearly wrapped up in his words, political influence, arrogant ideology and a disdain for due process. Rundle had been an educator at Douglas County Schools for 28 years before he resigned. 2021 was a record year for marijuana sales in Colorado, just over $2.2 billion. The state took in more than $423 million in tax revenue. Now, since the retail market launched back in 2014, nearly $500 million from the cannabis tax revenue has gone to support public schools. Home sales are down in Colorado. The Colorado Association of Realtors says inventory levels are at an all-time low. Denver 7's Byron Wang spoke with realtors who say buyers are getting beat out. The offers just getting beat out left and right. That's why Nolan Baker rushed to see the first showing of this Southeast Denver home. This has actually been probably one of our favorites. But as Baker has learned, placing the initial bid in this housing market doesn't guarantee a thing. It definitely makes it a little more stressful as a first time home buyer. As his real estate agent Joy Dysart points out, the bids over asking price have been at an all time high. We're seeing over asking up to 160 to $100,000 and waiving all inspections, waiving appraisals, things like that. 
Offers like these are no longer a surprise when taking into account a new report released Thursday by the Colorado Association of Realtors. That report shows only 1,400 homes were listed in the entire Denver metro in January. That's a nearly 60% drop in inventory from the same time last year. We have tied last month for the historic uh, lowest amount of inventory on record. Demand, on the other hand, has skyrocketed. The median property went up 19% in just one year with our latest statistics. According to the National Realtors Association, the Denver Metro ranks in the top 10 for least available homes for sale that can be afforded by a family making between $75,000 to $100,000 a year. What does that mean? Simply that a family making $100,000 a year can only afford about one in every 350 homes on the market here. It takes some finagling to get a property now. The luxury of taking your time to decide if a home is right for you is gone. You got to move. The decisions are snap, snap decisions. Bayon Wang, Denver 7. And putting this in perspective tonight in Jefferson County, there were only 125 homes listed for sale in January. In Fort Collins, 95. And then you head to smaller towns like Crested Butte, for example, where there are only 30 homes currently on the market. And not one of those homes is listed under a million. Only seven are going for less than two million. Things that are relevant to the culture and things that we celebrate, things that we enjoy. Nostalgia overload. Iconic moments in black history are on full display in Denver. She wanted to do like a 70s Funkatronic type theme. I think it's a cool way to kind of learn about the culture, but also celebrate it as well. And Von Miller shows more love for the Broncos ahead of Super Bowl 56. Instead of uh, Peyton Manning, we got Matthew Stafford, both veteran quarterbacks, both uh, you know able to lead their teams to a uh, Super Bowl.